When you want to measure the temperature, you will probably use a thermometer with a probe that you stick into the object. Imagine you cook a meal and you need to know the certain temperature of this one. Or you want to check your fever. But there are cases in which you can't simply stick the thermometer into the object. These cases may include a very hot object that you cannot get close to, this is too far away, or you just simply need to do it very quickly. To solve this problem, you can use an IR thermometer. They are very easy to use and give you results in less than a second. But how do they work? The principle behind it is that every object above the absolute zero, like this muffin, emits electromagnetic radiation. This also means that it emits radiation in the infrared region, which is invisible for the naked eye. The IR thermometer focuses the transmitted, reflected and emitted IR energy from the body that we want to measure the temperature of. Then, the thermal energy is converted by a thermopile into electrical energy and then can be translated into centigrade or Fahrenheit. But not every object or material emits this energy in the same way. The amount of thermal energy that a body emits, called emissivity, goes from 1, being a perfect black body, to 0, and it plays a big role when measuring the temperature. In some IR thermometers, the emissivity can be adjusted depending on what material you are measuring but in others, it might be fixed to a specific value. This means that two different materials that have the same temperature can have two different readings. It also can give you a wrong measurement if the emissivity is set up to the wrong value. At first glance, it looks very simple. You take the device, you point at something, press the button, and it gives you the surface temperature, right? No. All the measurements you take, you need to pay attention to a few very, very important details. First, learn how to operate your thermometer and read the manual. Remember that fog, smoke and other weather conditions may have an impact on the results. Adjust the emissivity of the device to the material that you are measuring. If the material is shiny or has low emissivity, you can apply some oil or black tape on the surface of the material for better emissivity. This means that the two different materials that have the same temperature or the emissivity is very low can have two different readings, like in this mocha pot. When we measure temperature on the kettle, it will be like 23. But when you apply black tape, the measurement will be different. Make sure that the device is perpendicular to the surface up to 30 degrees deviation. To get the best results, get as close as possible. The laser dot is only for aiming. The laser dot shows the center of the spot from which it gets the average temperature. To determine the spot size, you need to know the distance to spot ratio or optical resolution. Here we have a 12 to 1 ratio, so if we are 12 inches away from the target, the spot size will be just 1 inch. The further we go, the bigger the spot size will get. So, if your target is smaller than the spot size, you must get closer or get a better IR thermometer. This IR thermometer has D to S ratio of 20 to 1, 8 inches more for the same spot size. Moreover, this one is equipped with two lasers that indicate the diameter of the spot size, so you do not need to make a calculation. After you have finished your measurements, make sure the device is cleaned of dust, smoke, dead or any other materials. If you don't clean and calibrate it regularly, eventually you will end up with inaccurate measurements. In this video, we have covered the working principles, the do's and don'ts of the IR thermometer. But remember, the laser is only for aiming. It has no measuring purposes. Act that indicate the detrimental. But so? <laughs> Moreover, this one is equipped. <laughs> like it or not, make sure you subscribe. The next are coming. If you need more information, read the description below and have fun.